we're so excited today because our guest today is the style and beauty director at People Magazine with 20 years of experience writing, editing stories about fashion and beauty. She recently visited me at E! News to discuss the Met Gala on our Met Gala special. And honestly, we could have kiki just me and her for like three hours because there was so much to discuss. So we had to invite her here to talk all about what we should be spending money on, what we should be saving on, the fashion trends, what we should be wearing in our real lives and all of that. Please welcome to the podcast, our good friend, Andrea Laventhal. Hello. Hello. Uh, maybe I should not have worn a sweatshirt with that intro. Like just <laughs> a, a gray, like nondescript sweatshirt. But You know what? It makes us trust you more. Yeah, Truthfully. It does. Invest in a sweatshirt, guys, because you're going to wear them a lot. A nice Hot sweatsuit. Tip. Hot tip. Well, this is the pro- This is the issue. Is that we've been talking about this a lot this year, even in our manifest year of like what we were manifesting this year. And it's like, mm-hmm. I think as women, we tend to buy clothes for a life that we don't actually have. Yes. And this is a big problem with how we're spending our money. We see all the beautiful things that you put out there, and all the beautiful things of Hollywood, and we're like, oh my god, I need this silk maxi skirt with a giant four inch belt. And then you're like, I'm wearing a gray sweatshirt. So Mm -hmm. how has style sort of evolved and what are you seeing as far as trends of what people are buying? Well, like what people are like wearing, you know, that we see versus what people are actually buying and wearing in real life. I feel like there's always a big divide, especially with like the Instagram of it all. Because according to my Instagram right now, everyone travels with trunks of clothes. (laughs) Like they have a stylist who puts together outfits. Who brings more than, I don't know, two, three pairs of shoes when you go on vacation? Apparently everyone is bringing (laughs) dozens and different bags and jewelry and full dresses. It doesn't make sense to me. The math isn't mathing. It's Where are you packing so, it? It's well, so strange. And a lot of these people, unfortunately, that I'm following are also on yachts. And right. well, I know that's yachts, the thing. <laughs> but yachts are large. But do they have a closet for 15 pairs of shoes and 17 handbags? It's just like so counterintuitive because I feel like the articles I've written a million times is like how to pack for a vacation. And it's like pack versatile items that you can dress up Capsule for a night. Collection. And it's like your black slip dress. Look, it's a cover up at the beach. Now you're at dinner because you put on sandals. But that's not what I see on Instagram. Nobody is re-wearing anything. The only time I've traveled with more than one suitcase was my wedding. I had three and it was horrendous. I would (laughs) never do it again. Like, I don't know how anybody just decides to do that, like, just for a vacation. It was horrible. I don't know. It just, like, it makes me think, like, is it a rich person thing? Are we just too poor to know the difference? I don't, (laughs) I, there's just like, that's what's- It's Instagram. It's the problem. It's Instagram. Because it's like, if I go to Italy and I wear, like, a black slip dress seven ways, then I'm not going to have seven beautiful photos of me in Italy. It's the same stupid dress. Granted, that is the economical and, like, common sense way that I want to go to Italy. But then I see Olivia Culpo who looks beautiful and fabulous in like, ha, like pops of color and, and pattern and updos. And ha- like, I'm like, I, I want to live that life. I want to be that girl, but I am just not. I just yeah. don't know where all those little handbags are packed, like <laughs> multiple little handbags. Like you bring one neutral bag that goes with every look. Like, can we not put the extra pressure that you need a special hand, whatever? Anyway. Yeah, I know. What was the question? Okay. <laughs> no, I love this. You know what? This is why we're having you here. We need to be brought down to earth. Okay. So I, one of the things that we, I saw recently in our Lady Gang Facebook group when I was saying that you were coming on is the most perfect question of all time. She said, hey, I need advice for women who have no interest in fashion, but don't want to look like a slob. Mm. What is that girl wearing to work? Mm -hmm. And what is that girl wearing on the weekend? Just tell her what to wear and she's going to wear it. Okay. One word, one syllable, belt. I know that sounds really simple, but I have to tell you guys, I forgot about belts for like the longest time. I think it was the pandemic when we all rejected hard pants, let alone like a belt. (laughs) All of a sudden, like, I don't know, a year or two ago, belts like re-entered my life. They found me. I don't even think I was looking for them. Every time I put on a belt, I'm like, well, oh my God, look at me. She is polished. She is professional. She like, it just really, and then you tuck in your shirt because you want to show off your belt. And now- you're a woman who can go out in the world and take Instagram pictures. Like, wow, it's so weird. True. So it's like you're wearing your jeans, you're wearing your button down, you put on your belt, you do a little front tuck, 
and all of a sudden you look a little bit more together. So a I think button down, about a button down also is just like the way to fool people into thinking you're sophisticated and chic. Absolutely. Yeah. It's really like a foolproof situation. And then your belt addition, I mean, and you're basically Gwyneth. Yeah, it, basically. And I, I, I know that they're kind of maybe a little played out in terms of like the fashion world, but we're not talking about fashion world. We're talking about fashion with a lowercase F, not the big F. <laughs> Sets. Sets are, they're genius. Like I have so many sets. I went a little set crazy, but every time I wear a set, people are like, oh my God, look at you. You put a matching top with a matching bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you and know I'm what? Like, I'm going to... I yeah, did. I got I together. did. I'm going to take it one step further. A type Kelty, the K type. I have taken, I did a big closet clean out and I was like, I do not even want to have to no longer look for my sets in my closet. And I did, I saw Catherine Schwarzenegger do this. So I copied her. I got those plastic bags, which I know is so bad for the environment, but all of my sets now either live on the same hanger or even my athletic wear, like sweatpants, like tops and bottoms, they all live in a plastic bag in my drawer. So I can, I literally pull out a lunch bag and I'm like, it's a matching set. And then I go. Like, I don't That's even have to thing. be like, where's the top and the bottom? I don't feel boring in my J Crew. I feel like, look at me, I'm a lady in my matching set. Like, yeah, we, don't about, need a, we don't need a winner pressure. cut out. No, <laughs> the cutout pressure is so real because I was going out, I was in New York and I was having like a weekend in the city, right? And normally when I would have a week out in the city, like I'm a, I'm like a, since 2000, like a blazer girl. Like I okay. love a, I am not like a, I, I'm not a sexy feminine dresser, but I was going to this one dinner in New York and I was like, I can't, I need something with a cutout. Like, yeah, that's when cutouts I, come up. Yeah. <laughs> if I want to look young and fresh, I have to have a cutout. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not that person. I had to remind myself that there's, I have to stick to what I know because the cutout yep. for me is just, it's a wreck. I did get one dress this summer with a, it's sort of a cutout. It's more of like a little bit of an open back from Madewell. I was like, Madewell. Whoa. Okay. Like, They're not I, a cutout brand. Right. Like I, I like that you're like, we can be more, but I'm also like, <laughs> now you made me think I can be more and I haven't worn the dress at all. <laughs> <laughs> not once. <laughs> okay. Andre, um, people style is such a mainstay for so many people. And if they haven't checked out the website in a while, if they just think of people magazine as like the, the magazine in the mm -hmm. stores, the work that you do on the website is like incredible. And you give so many options. A lot of it's shoppable, which is mm -hmm. amazing. I want to know the top five biggest fashion stories. Like what were people the most interested in? Because I think it's really interesting with these websites, what we think would be the biggest story, not al always is like, what were people like, really into this year? Well, because we're people, celebrity, everything's through like a celebrity lens, right? Of course. So it's really who's of the moment that everybody's interested in and what are they wearing and where are they going? So that was this year, that was Taylor Swift anywhere, mostly at the Super Bowl, but that traffic, like the just volume of traffic around Taylor Swift having hair, wearing clothes, like <laughs> just existing was, I've never seen Whoa. anything like it. And um, we milked it. <laughs> and Obviously. Like, um, we were like, please do more, go to another game. Cause like just her, her on stage is like, but we see that all the time mm -hmm. now, yeah. but for some reason, like her going to, you know, the Super Bowl, obviously, or just being at these games, wearing these clothes, people just lose their minds. So she well, was kind of cool because you were like, what do you, what is girl of like girl of the moment world wear when she's trying to look hot for her guy at a game? Like it's that's like, like every girl. Relatable, basic, yeah. like yes. high school dilemma. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> not really for me because. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a boyfriend who played a um, sport like that, but I, I can imagine, right? Like I've seen enough teen movies. That seems like yeah. it's the trope. Okay. And then anything like Met Gala is, you know, that's our Super Bowl. I hate saying stuff like that, but it's true. It's just when you have that many celebrities at an event like yeah. that, wearing such bonkers stuff, everybody, you know, as we know, we did this together. It's just so fun to to be critical, like to yeah. be like, what was she? And it's so funny because, you know, just because it's like, again, important fashion with a capital F doesn't mean it's good or everyone has to right. like it. 
So if I say, oh my God, but the construction and it's a reference to Balenciaga, okay. But like my parents still think it's ugly. And that's yeah. so <laughs> I love that because everybody just like comes mm-hmm. alive and it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. so that was big. And Passion. right now, oh my God, like right now, Blake Lively with this, this method dressing, like people are into it. I don't know For if the they're movie? into it. Yes. I think what is that bewildered. vibe? Okay. I'm confused about the method. Can you explain it? Because well, it's, it's like a lot of florals. It's so the like movies, very messy. She plays a floral shop owner, I understand. Uh, her, her, <laughs> guys, the florals guys. make sense all of a her sudden. Her name in the movie is Lily Bloom. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Um, and so I, I just got to interview her for the Blake Brown um, launch. Yep. But I, of course, asked her because she was starting off this like psychotic floral like parade. So I, I asked her, you know, like method dressing has become really big. We had Barbie and then we had Zendaya do the tennis core. Love. But like she's been doing it, Blake. She did it with a simple favor when she did all the suits. And you know what she said? She does it because she's really shy. And oh. it helps her play a character. So oh. it it lets her like hide behind the character. And then she just goes all out. And she also said it's a great way to market the movie, um, especially when you have limited budget. I thought that was a very <laughs> like inside baseball, like, I don't know, business lady of her to share. Yeah. I, I love that. Have you been like, see, like every time I go to the bathroom and come back, she's in a new floor. Like, I don't know where she's going, where she's changing, what's happening, but it's, I've lost count. Is it good for, like, is she dressing good? Because for the movie, it was, like, very messy and, like, miss, like... I think what people like about it is that it's so out there. There's very few celebs these days who are They will take a risk. Right. And then when they do and someone says they don't like it, then they, like, yell at you and they're like, you're you're mean. Like, (laughs) I'm allowed to express. And then it just becomes, like, this very weird, toxic... But... Blake is like, I'm a maximalist. I'm going to go bonkers. I'm going to wear the earrings, the shoes, the belt, the rings, you know, all the stuff you're not going to wear together. And a lot of people in the comments are like, this is ridiculous. And it is, but like, it's kind of fun to look at. So whether it's good fashion or good taste is subjective, but at least just giving us like look after look. It's what I always say about JLo. I'm like, JLo on a red carpet, like she's going to give you a full look. She's never going to just come in the black dress thing and be like, I'm chic. It's like, no, no, I'm, it's borderline fabulous, tacky, fabulous showgirl, but like I'm there for it. It's something to look at. And that's what I'm so bored with JLo. It's all the same theme though. Like I want her to do something different. It's always showgirl. Well, I I know. I think JLo's having a summer, you know? <laughs> She's we're gonna having let her, a summer. We're going to let her do her comfort showgirl and we'll reinvent in 2025. See through tight, yeah. If anyone should be in like a sweatsuit right now. Yeah. yeah. If anyone should be in a matching She's set in a sweatsuit. sweatsuit on the inside. Yeah. yeah her, heart, her heart is in a sweatsuit. <laughs> okay. When we come back with Andrea, we are going to smash her pass. Okay. We are back. There are some very questionable things happening in fashion that we want to discuss with everyone. Um, Okay, smash or pass. Leggings, this is for everybody. Leggings with a scrunched up crease on the butt. (laughs) I could never, again, they don't support my lifestyle. Though though it has like the scrunch, so it like makes your butt look more like Like a a bikini, like like those bikini bottoms that sometimes have the scrunch. Yeah, Yeah, but but it's it's like tight. So it like literally like goes in your butt. Like it's a permanent wedgie. Yeah, and it makes your butt, it's like the super viral. It like frames oh, your butt. Zach got very upset about a girl in these um, yeah. when we were out to lunch the other day. He was like, what's with us having to look at every woman's um, labia and butt mm-hmm. cracks? Yeah. And I was like, well, it's like it's like we're like feeling confident in our bodies and we don't feel like we want to, you know, it's like free the nipple and free the mm-hmm. labia and free the butt cheeks. And he's like, I feel less confident when I look at that. It's not <laughs> body. Or what did he say? I was like, it's body positivity. Like, here's my labia. It's beautiful. He's like, I feel very negative when I see that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that we're ready for to free the labia, but that's just me. And I live in Greenwich and we don't get a lot of labia action. There are so much that's labia true. in Los Angeles. In a, if you go to LAX, it's all I see is a bike short and a labia or a, or, or a one piece onesie with a labia. It's I mean, so much. I'm I still st- can't believe people fly in shorts. It blows my mind. Thank you. I don't Upsetting. want anything touching anything. No, no, um, no. 
as somebody who has worn a biker short version of this a couple years ago, like I was going to, I was trying it out. It is the most uncomfortable thing that you will ever wear in your, like Mm. it is wedgy up the vagina because it doesn't just stop at the butt crack. Like you're Mm. going all it's, it's bad. So it's like, you really got to sacrifice for the look. It defeats the purpose of a legging. Yes. Yeah. No. It's supposed to be comfortable. Yeah. But then I see the viral video and where like it really sold me on the TikTok where the late the girl put it on and then the guy is like, whoa, babe, you're not going out in that. And I was like, should I be sexier if I'm wearing my leggings? And then the pressure to be hot, even when I'm wearing my leggings felt like a lot. And I just was like, yeah. <gasps> but it's I, a whole thing. I don't like, I know people get upset with us for talking about like we age ourselves and like whatever, whatever. But like we're women of a certain age and I don't our asses do change. Like there is something, no matter how hard you work out or what you do, like my ass is going to look different than a 22 year old's ass. And I think if we're going to be honest, like those are the people that are on TikTok making us think we may need to put those things on, but then we forget that our bodies have changed. I will say it does really make your butt look better though. (laughs) better but not 22 even even like a mid 30s 40s like it does it makes it you it's a little anti-aging I kind of want to order a pair and roll up to like the Greenwich Club Pilates tomorrow please do (laughs) where I take my level one my level one reformer with like a bunch of 70 year old women because it makes me feel young and vibrant and be like Barbara (laughs) Susan uh uh-huh what do we think you see the wedgie this is an investigative report that I need on people's style meanwhile you notice I didn't say anything about a man right because like who can, I'm just want to know what Barbara, Susan, and the other gals think. Yeah. Of course. Like, we know what the man is going to think. Yeah. You know? they'll, ki- they'll get you. Okay. Yeah. Um, pockets. Fake pockets and oh. fake zippers. Ugh. Don't fake any. Like, no fake no. anything. Pass. I no. hate it. I hate That's it. That's like mean. You think it you makes you, <laughs> lip balm you feel uncomfortable. You Although, let me just say this is one that I'm going to let slide. Whitney Cummings has a pair of screen printed sweatpants jeans jeans. yeah (laughs) they swear to god they look so real but it is a full-blown sweatpant and I'm just I really respect her commitment to comfy and that is for sure not a real pocket that's screen printed on those sweatpants those feel more like no as somebody who also bought those (laughs) (laughs) I bought there was like a city I think they're citizens of humanity which were they're also like two hundred dollars they're not cheap and um you know it's uh they definitely don't look real in real life they look they look very like Timu sort of a vibe Mm. who are you faking out with that like what's the like herself (laughs) yeah like you're going up to people and being like real or like (laughs) hot dogs or legs yeah it's just like uh, yeah like what's the I don't know but see those need a real pocket the fact that those it's like they're screen printed and then the pockets are screen printed on there like put a real pocket on to like always put a real pocket in a real zipper don't fake it yeah but also I I don't know, guys. I'm going to go against the grain because in a dress pant, if it's a light color, you can that see little, the pocket. You can see the pocket. Well, and I'm like, don't just, put a pocket. Cut the pocket out. Yeah, you do. You can just do a tr- <laughs> trouser, no pocket. Just don't do a pocket or don't wear white dress pants. You know what I mean? Yeah, that Both too. totally available. <laughs> no reason yeah. for white dress pants ever again. No. True. I wore those like once and it was like the most terrifying night. I just like had to stand. <laughs> I was like, I can't sit, I can't eat, eat, I'm just going to stand. Yeah, like here I am. If anyone wants to talk to me, stand. Like it was, yeah. No, I literally have this pair of dress pants. I have it in three colors. It's now available on Army Grain on the Marshall site. Um, (laughs) It's the same Ellie Tahari dress pant, high waist. I saw Ami Song wear it at an event two years ago, bought the blue, got it in black. They don't wrinkle. And I'm, I actually gave up on wrinkle fabrics. Me if too. you make clothing and it needs to be steamed before I put it on. And then again, when I get out of the car, I don't have time for that in my life. Yeah. I got rid of everything, everything crunchy and everything that I can't sit in the car for 10 minutes on the way to dinner without it getting wrinkled. I don't have room for you. Do stop making clothes out of fabrics that do this. Why are we still doing linen? Like I know, I am, but right. then it's like people do linen because it's breezy and then it always has to be lined with like a polyester. So then it defeats the purpose and then it always gets wrinkled. Linen tortures me because I always like buy it and I'm like, mm-hmm. um, this is the summer do it. <laughs> for my yacht. You know, like this is it. I've never, like, I never go on boats. I don't know where I'm wearing it. Like, it just, it doesn't support, again, it doesn't support my lifestyle, but I, 
I, I want it. It's just I nice. want Same. to wear that breezy linen thing. Yeah. And I'm like face tuning the creases off the front. Yeah. Like, uh, okay. Um, this one is going to be interesting, Jack. The biggest, tra- one of the biggest uh, athleisure wear trends, a cropped hoodie. I like a cropped hoodie. I don't think, is that like a new thing? You would. I have a bunch. I think so what do you do. wear underneath? Not just a sports bra? Um, yeah, I don't like, I'm very weird with sweatshirts. Like I can't like layer with them. So it's just the crop hoodie and then okay. maybe a matching, matching sweatpant or something like that. I think it's cute. Cause it's like, if you're trying to go super like leisure wear, like it kind of, it gives you some sort of like a shape. I don't know. To me, it makes me want to just not do it. Um, because the places that I'm wearing, a sweatsuit are meant for full comfort and my belly button needs protection. Well, I do don't, I don't like the breeze. That's the problem Mm. is you get a breeze on the midsection Mm. and then you're like, what is I'm hot. And then I'm freezing on the, on the tummy. Yeah. I feel like the whole point of a sweatshirt is to hide and like live in your sweatshirt and like just, so if it's cropped, where am I going? I got, I have nowhere to hide. I'm exposed. I don't know where to wear them. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what the, what the, they always sit in my closet. Like I've I've worn them seldomly. It's like a post-workout lunch situation where you like need to look kind of cute and like a big oversized hoodie is not really the vibe. I sort of know, I sort of understand it. The cropped hoodie. Well, Weird, it reminds weirdly. me of like bat mitzvah season when I had to wear a bolero <laughs> jacket yes. to temple. And it, they're like a bolero. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the ugly, it's like a dicky. Like, yes, it's a dicky. Yeah. Weird pieces that exist and like for very specific purposes. Yes. And I'd be like, I don't want to wear the bolero. Like, it ruins the look. <laughs> this is a spaghetti strap. And my mom would be like, you have to cover, cover your sh- shoulders and shawl. So <laughs> I almost feel like the cropped hoodie is like, yes, you're going to lunch. Like, you know, you have to cover yourself over the Caesar salad. salad. <laughs> oh my God. It's so true. Okay. Um, in general, our girl is like, please stop making cropped everything. It is yeah. very hard to find anything not cropped. Like everything is cropped, which I get it's good it, like for some things, but even when you go into like stores now, like everything is cropped. Things that yeah. shouldn't be cropped are cropped. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And you're like, mm-hmm. it's like the cutouts. It's an epidemic. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. we're good. Give us a full shirt. Um, okay. Eyebrows brushed upwards. I know each and every one of us has tried it. We've all laminated and we've given up. Tell Not us. Me. No, I, you st- I don't I have don't, them. I don't. I brush up when I'm like filling them in and then inevitably I just take them down. I think again, like I, I have to know my place in this world yeah. and I brushed up brow. <laughs> I was going aggressive with the brush up and then I heard someone's husband talking about another woman, not myself, (laughs) another woman being like, what's wrong with her eyebrows? And I was like, well, that I was just talking to her five minutes ago and I was thinking those are brow goals. Like she had such a great like brushed up brow (laughs) and he was, he was genuinely like just so naive and just so concerned about like what was happening. He's like, did she get electrocuted? (laughs) (laughs) Why are her brows standing up? I think the one thing that we have learned about our youth is like, let's not do trends on our brows. Right. That's a, a brow great trend point. is bad. Figure out what is just working for you personally. Have it tasteful. Don't Guys, go too big or too that's small. Merch. That goes on your merch <laughs> about brow yes. trends. Because like, it's true. Yes. I think it's like one of the easiest ways to like tell that like a photo is dated or like yeah. mm-hmm. this is from You're a few so years right. ago is like, what are we doing with the brows? It was like soap brows. Then it was the thick brows. Now we're going thin again. And it's just like, just do the brow that God gave you. you yeah. know? Sure. And pluck a few hairs. I mean, we say that and we're like, don't do it. Didn't you learn anything? And like, meanwhile, we all have tattooed eyebrows. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I'm trying tattooed? to get the ends Everyone's off Everyone's so good. You guys well, look- I didn't, I put, plucked out my, all of my brows when I was younger. So oh. microblading was my only option. Like trichotillomania style? No, 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 no. But oh, like, Those are my I mean, favorite kind of kids. It looks like it, it was. <laughs> oh my like, gosh. I well, always- even, honestly, even just last week, I f***ed with my brows because your friend, makeup artist Afton, posted this like henna brow oil thing, babe brow that you put on, which is a great product. And I was like, well, I want to tint my brows at home. Sure. And I did it. And I went to work the next day and my makeup artist was like scrubbing my eyebrow being like, what have you done? You are 40s. Stop <laughs> with your eyebrow. Like at some point, you know, this isn't going to work on you. Yeah. We never, okay. we never learn. We never, we never learn. learn. Okay. Um, two quick ones. Broccoli haircuts on men was very polarizing. Broccoli this, boys. The broccoli boys. The broccoli boys. haircut. 
Um, I, I tried to this. get Chris to get this haircut. It is Kelty. Just, it's for twenty year olds. I. That's what he said when I suggested broccoli, it. What? It's a short. It's, it's, it's a broccoli short boy. It's like side. The, it's like the TikTok boys all it's have it. It's the top, and they sometimes permit, and the broccoli Ew. comes down in the front like this. It's yeah. kind of like it feels like a European soccer star haircut. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's not American. <laughs> no. I mean, nine like ninety percent of my husband and my attractiveness is in our hair. And if he ever, <laughs> ever like <laughs> d- I, I like I I don't think I could look at him. Like I, I would be so up if he changes the part, like while it gets out of the shower, I'm like, please just fix it. Like you're hideous. <laughs> I'm serious. Jared, Jared, always thre- Jared always threatens to cut his hair into a broccoli boy haircut. I was like, if you piss me off, it's love, coming. Do you remember like when all the boys had this Caesar cut like um, George Clooney on ER, like the brush yes. down, like that was mm-hmm. in the 90s. Yes. Like mm-hmm. you, uh, to your point about dating yourself, like hairstyles, nothing dates you. And this one is stupid. But it's fu- <laughs> the only reason that I kind of like it is I feel like boys haven't had a hairstyle. Like I feel okay, like sure. they've been too scared. Like our whole generation after like maybe we were in seventh grade and everybody had like the Devin Sawa sort of a mm. situation. Or, or dyed Every- their hair like yellow yellow white trying to look like limp biscuit yes. yeah or like yes. a mark mcgrath thing but like ever since then i feel like men have been too scared to like do anything you know what you're hair. right let them live let them I experiment, I experiment. <laughs> yeah i do i do like while that you thing. have it try something yeah i know yeah, yeah. <laughs> while you have gone. it do something with it sure you're right you're right just not my husband can't <laughs> okay the last thing i want to discuss is long denim skirts now i saw this everywhere and i bought three i swear to god <laughs> A went black, in. Like a I maxi? went in a maxi skirt. I have SpongeBob SquarePants body shape, and I know <laughs> that square things on me are bad. I do not wear a pencil skirt. Like okay. I know a square skirt is bad. Yet I bought. I felt <laughs> like I felt like I was going to be Becca a little bit, like the long denim skirt. Not that you've ever worn one, but I feel like yeah, you would. I have. Okay, and and I sold and I, it like a week after I wore it. <laughs> yeah. It does it not photograph work. well. It doesn't work. I tried it too. I bought and like two of them and I never wore them because I'm like, I can't figure out the outfit for it. Like it just like. I've had I, one in my cart on net a porte for like four weeks and I check on it, <laughs> say hi, think about it. It <laughs> looks so tempting, but it also looks like orthodox chic. Yes. And I have been like drawn to that before and then gotten burned where you're like now, uh, you know, back to shul again. Yeah. So I haven't done it, but I, I do admire it on other people like who can figure it out. It's tricky. Like, why yeah, are we doing tricky. this to ourselves? Life is hard enough. Well, why also, are we wearing that? I shouldn't be telling the style expert this, but don't do a net a porte if you're not if you're experimenting. You need to go lower and just see if there's yeah. something there. Thanks and sauce. then sometimes if you love I it, like to just like <laughs> hurt myself. Do you know I what I mean? I understand. You're like, if I'm gonna make not just a risk, but I'm gonna do it somewhere that makes no sense. <laughs> I saw it on sale. <laughs> and when it's on, oh, sale, on sale, all bets are off. Like oh, yeah. 40% off. I'm like, now it's mine. Now it makes sense. Yeah. When things are final sale, I get the most um, brave. Me too. Serotonin. I don't understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, like the shame you can't spiral. Return it. Mm-hmm. I have a list in my phone. I started this years and years ago. It's called the Never Again list to remind <gasps> myself to stop doing things that like I kept bangs. doing. So on it is a lot of shopping, and one mm. of it was buying things final sale. And I like to look at that list and like stick my tongue out at myself <laughs> and be like, I'm doing it. Who am I, who am I hurting? Who like, you know, it's wild. We got to hurt you know, ourselves. We are way. actually going to be doing an entire podcast on the never again list. Yeah. I absolutely love that idea. I think it is so brilliant. Yeah. My very last thing, I know we have to let you go because you have like a very huge website to no, run. I, um, I cleared the morning. Okay. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, I have a thing- doctor's appointment. The last thing I want to ask you about is this big story about the Dior handbag. Um, This is going everywhere, this fancy handbag investigation that the Dior bag, which I have the dupe of and carry proudly. um, So do I. I was given given it as a gift. Is it the Amazon one? 
Is it like, the saddlebag or is it the no? It's the, the toe, toe one. the lady the, like, toe or whatever. It is. It's the it's the cloth um, one, cloth like one fabric. that has all the D's and then it says Dior on it. It's like a hard bag. It's actually it looks. It's like what a lot of the bloggers used as like a beach bag for a very while. Very subtle. It's like yeah, so I'm, subtle. I'm, you want <laughs> everyone like to know on the beach, like yeah, I'm, Christian Dior. Yes. I'm so rich that I can yes. get sand in this tapestry kind of egg. But yes. it came out that that they found out that the bag only costs fifty. Eight dollars to make, and it mm. sells for like almost three thousand dollars. Now, I think anyone who knows anything knows that the markup on fashion is crazy. Um, it, Andrew, what are your thoughts on like luxury fashion? I know that they're having a hard time because people are starting to get really smart and they're buying stuff secondhand. Like, what are your thoughts? And I, I know they probably advertise on your site, so you probably like, can't say too much. No. but like, what are your thoughts on this? I think that it's sort of, it's, it's related. So I've noticed that the whole dupe culture with luxury items has gotten like almost like eclipse the, uh, having the actual bag, but most surprising in women who can afford the real bag. So I have friends who are like really excited about buying one that looks exactly the same for a few hundred dollars. It's not like it's, they're yeah. spending 50 bucks on a fake. They're buying these really great fakes and proudly telling everybody. <laughs> yeah. I, it's the strangest phenomenon. And I feel like maybe that's part of the reason is we know that these bags, as much as they're like just a status symbol and you're paying all this money to be like, I have this bag. It's also kind of ridiculous. You know, it yeah. got, it's gotten out of control. So we can get the bags sort of for like a more nor I don't it, I I'm still have it wrapped my head. Well, those it's dupes, the, a lot of the dupes too are like real leather. They're like made out of maybe it's not as nice leather, but like they're pretty much made out of the same materials, so it's like you really do realize it's like yeah, okay, it's the label. It's whatever it's just it so is, funny but it's ridiculous. It's like people it's, never wanted to admit anything was never. fake, a ring, a, like a diamond and anything. And now all these girls are like Oh my God, no, you don't understand. I found this guy. Da, 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 da. You're like, <laughs> but Stephanie, you can buy like seven real Chanel bags. Like I know. And Stephanie is like, no, I want 3000 fake bags. <laughs> it's, it's bonkers. It's so bonkers. And I just think there are so many good brands, like small lines that are doing yes. beautiful handcrafted bags for the price of a Gucci dupe or whatever, like a Fendi dupe. It's like maybe 200 bucks. And I just think I respect as a fashion lover when I see a woman 